Greetings, mortals, and welcome back to The Broken Pact, the mythic odysseys of Theros show here on twitch.tv slash saving throw show, sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. I'm your dungeon master, or should I say your Therosian chorus for this adventure, Ruben Bressler, and these heroes are my players. Please feel free to introduce yourselves. Yep, yeah, uh, yep. hi everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and I play Astarok, who is a minotaur and a fighty punch guy. And he used to be part of the Boros Legion and still sort of is, but they don't exist on this plane. So he's going around uh, with with these folks. Uh, and uh, that's, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Riley Silverman and I play Safia, the Tempest Cleric, who is a Nyx-born lineage, and she is a follower of Thassa. Uh, hello, I'm Danielle Radford. I play Lydia. Lydia is a human. Lydia is a swashbuckler. Lydia likes to punch faces a whole bunch. And uh, Lydia has a very strong bond with the god Thassa. Uh, Thassa is my homegirl, but in a sexy way, I hope someday. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Ashlyn. I play Tuturu. Tuturu! She's a Luxodon cleric um, from Theros, and she. Sorry, where's she from? <laughs> oh, <laughs> from Ravnica. I mean, she's yes. from here now. <laughs> she who uh, is yeah. in Theros. She's going native. Yeah, she she she's uh <laughs> she's in Theros. Uh, she's one of her kind only in Theros as far as she knows. And uh, yeah, she's here ready to party and see what her friends are up to um, and how many gods they were able to uh, track down in her absence. Yeah, that's right. And we will uh, we'll get to that uh, momentarily. But first, we do have some lovely sponsors who've helped us this season, starting first with Hero Forge. All right, oh, that's me, that's my cue. Um, okay, hey, Hero Forge. You know what Hero Forge is? They have minis with full color options and loads of customization, from combat wheelchairs to banners of war. Make your favorite characters using their Hero Creator System. Check out HeroForge.com for more info or enter chat command exclamation point Hero Forge. Ch that's it. <laughs> uh, and don't forget, uh, check out our friends at Die Hard Dice, where you can save 10% using the code NATURAL20 yeah, at checkout. Uh, use command uh, exclamation point DH Dice in chat for links and info. Now, the code only works until the end of this month, so you want to get on that now. And you can order our friend CB's dice set and get your 10% off. So you're mm. like double helping friends, and we love friends. Yeah, only two more days left in this month. Can't, oh, no. Can't. I'm not I'm not happy with the with knowing that information. Sorry. Um <laughs> we also want to thank any watchers of the VOD on our YouTube or our listeners of our podcast uh, and remind you to please like, comment, subscribe, tap the bell, all those things so you never miss another video from us. We love hearing from you all so long as you're nice. Uh, and you can send a toast to us for $15 for 1500 bits or for five or more gifted subs and we'll read it on the air it says here don't be a jerk so don't be a jerk uh and we do have a guest coming next week um gil ramirez gil the vlogsmith the dm of let's get wild mount um you might know him from uh being invoked when people roll their all metal dice because he is uh he is a, a purveyor of Damascus steel and pure iron dice and things like that. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be a ton of fun. Cool. Um, yeah, I think that that pretty much covers uh, our intros. So it's time to go into the intro here and dive back in to the Broken Pact.
<laughs> we're in rare form tonight. Uh, episode six, Ifara's Enlightenment. Two down, 13 to go. The Moray and her crew of Sephia, Lydia, Astarok, and Tuturu are on a quest to beseech the 15 gods of Theros for their approval. Their mission, nothing short of saving the world. However, saving the world in this case means opening it up. And the gods of Theros closed their gates to other planner outsiders ages ago, during the fall of the Titans, one of whom remains at large, presumably wreaking havoc on some other plane, potentially awaiting an opportunity to return, such as this one. It is with this history in mind that some of the gods are probably going to be less than enthused by our cadre's ultimate goal. When last we saw our heroes, they were in Nyx, the god realm, and had just convinced Keranos, the god of storms, played wonderfully last week by Gabe Hicks, of their worthiness and their cause. He asked the party uh, to experience what it means to have the whole world in their hands. <laughs> the whole world in their hands. Quite literally, as they made their way to the bearer of heavens himself, Alcyonus, the giant who holds the world. A stormcaller of Keranos named Dura, also wonderfully played by Gabe Hicks, was their guide into those treacherous waters. They ran afoul of a necromantic tempest that brought with it ghosts and ghouls, but they fought off the foul corruptions, completed their ordeal to uphold the world for three days, and returned and earned Keranos' approval. Now with okays from both Keranos and Krufix, the god of horizons, the party sails the dream seas of Nyx toward the mystic sea. That is where we pick up our story. You can uh, see on your starfish map that there are many nearby starfish, some of whom are in other realms, of course. The closest in this realm appears to be that of Ifara, um, who is on a northern isle. You are also uh, about 270 miles from Heliod, the god of the sun. Well, I mean, we're um, we're already at sea, so it feels like we should probably just go on north and uh, pop into Afara and be like, "What's up, Afara?" Um, sure. I mean, hey, if it goes as well as our last two, uh, you know, encounters go, it should be fine. Yeah, this actually seems like a really easy task. I'm surprised that the guys just didn't do it themselves. It's weird. You to know, say. I, I gotta say, I kind of thought that being strong and not thinking too hard about stuff, two specialties of mine, wouldn't be all that useful in this, like, God-negotiating situation. But it's turned out to be pretty much exactly what is necessary, so I'm just yeah. hoping it continues to be important. And you got a cool toy out of it that's, like, really... Like, you and I can be, like, the lightning buddies, and that can yeah. be what we can do. You see this thing? And he throws his, his uh, new javelin up and kind of spins around, and he catches it. Ugh, I can't wait till I've got some, like, you know, real good distance I can throw this thing, and it's not just going to go off into the ocean and disappear. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that, because then this isn't going to make any sense. And uh, Lydia has been drawing um, lightning buddies on the boat <laughs> uh, to commemorate, because we all knew how special it was, uh, which I was just learning how special getting that back was. Um, so that's got to be part of the story. So Lydia is is uh, very crudely but tastefully drawing the lightning buddies at work. And it's kind of like, a, um, you know, that image in uh, movies where the two people are clasping hands. Yeah. Like, yeah, you did it. And then the other hand is riding the lightning. I love, I love it. it. I'm into it. I like, I like to imagine that Astaroth has been telling Lydia and Sophia the story of his lightning javelin, but like with like levels of tragedy as if as if it was like Darth Sidious telling the tale of the plat the tragedy of Darth Plagueis. Like it's that level of like, have you ever heard the story of the lightning? <laughs> that. And also there's like a detail that's been dropped in about how he met his dad, who he thought was dead, and it's just kind of sort of brushed off as an unimportant element. Of the story. <laughs> A lot well, of things have happened. Well, dice. Thanks for the raid. Oh, hey, hey welcome. welcome! Thank you for the raid. So you, uh, it probably takes about a week of travel uh, to get from uh, Keranos' Temple of Epiphany on his volcanic island up towards where 
the starfish identifies Ifara's uh, uh, city or the polis where she makes her home is. Uh, is there anything you wish to do during the seven days of travel? I think a couple of nights along the way, I would have sent a message to Al, just like checking in with him, like making sure he's cool. Like, you know, like I told him I was going to do that. So I think that mm. I would definitely do that, but not, not too much. Like, I don't want to seem like, I don't want to come on like I'm like I'm bugging him, but yeah, yeah I'll just stop in and be like, hey, how's, how's that world treating you? Is this still yep. heavy? It's cool. <laughs> and much, and much like me talking to my parents during quarantine, most of it is, yeah, nothing new. Things are fine. Uh, you know, it's, every day is exactly the same, but we make it through. You know? I'm like, am I am I annoying you? I was trying to keep you company, but I feel like I might be keeping no, you. I'm sorry if it's a problem. Absolutely I just... not. I to have somebody to talk to is is a godsend. What's up with that dragon? He's still bugging you. Cornelius is uh, he's fine. He'll, I'll, okay. He I, he he stays far enough away that I can't get him. But, you want us? Uh, you want us to get him? Should we should we come by and take care of him? Not right now. It's fine okay. for now. I appreciate it. Maybe later, though. That would be that would be awesome later. But right now, I think uh, he's he's not on my nerves too much. Okay. Hey, y'all. We we might not right now, but if you're ever in the mood to fight a dragon, that dragon we were gonna fight last time, we might. Like Al says, it'd be cool if we did. But like maybe we can do our actual job first and come back later. Oh, that's like dessert. I've never punched a dragon in the face. Like. When you say dragon, what, what what are we talking about dragon here? Are we talking about like a elder dragon, like in charge of a guild dragon? Or are we talking about a little dragon? You have dragons? Yeah. I'm going to guess like, like in between those two things. Yeah, maybe, maybe Astaroth, if you know this guild dragon, maybe you could maybe better differentiate it. Yeah, so we saw this thing fly by and I would put it on like... A little bit smaller than Niv, but, uh, you know, bigger than, like, something that could be a pet. Like, okay. it could have eaten us, but it couldn't have eaten us as easily as Niv Mizzet could have. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Also, uh, that dude just sucks. Yeah, he was, like, real mean to our friend, so. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But to be fair, he almost completely ignored us. That's true. <laughs> That is true. So maybe, 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 and who knows? Maybe, maybe Al is like taunting him. Maybe Al's like, "Hey, I got a big world here. You don't have a world, do you?" Like, who knows? Yeah. We don't know. We met I Al mean, for like five minutes total. So, yeah, exactly. And and all he did was make us carry a world for him for three days. You know, like. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean he didn't make us. I would say Karenos made us do it. Al was kind of like, "Oh, you're you're here to hold the world." Sure. Sure. I mean, who wouldn't take a break if offered a break? I mean, yeah, you know yeah. what? You're right. I I did the guy wrong with that little uh, description there. We totally offered. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it does take a little bit of travel, but you have pretty much smooth seas. Go ahead and roll a d20 for me to see if there's any uh, obstructions or storms or anything on your way. Uh, I'll do it. Any, anyone at all. I got a 19. Yeah, you That's did. That's a thing. That's fun for I me. I my numbers Oof. are fun for me. I'm gonna pretend it's good roll. Oh no! <laughs> I know it's what not. You done. But that doesn't stop me. As you are on your way, um, you are traveling through mostly featureless ocean, uh, dream ocean, of course. But it is, you know, the occasional outcropping of rock is all you can. This is a. Uh, this is like the South Dakota of Nix. There's less happening here than anywhere else you've been so far in the uh, God realm. And I'm ready to throw shade on South Dakota. <laughs> well, uh, sorry, South Dakota. I I look forward to your mail. Um, there are, and so it's with that in mind that a bright light emanating from deep underneath the ocean, about a hundred feet in front of and just to the left of where you're sailing catches your attention. Hmm. Should we go around that, do you think? Yeah. Be... Does Is that it... normally happen in the normal realm? Um, I mean, yeah, there are things in the water, like a lot, um, and they're usually like not things you want to mess with, so. Hmm. 
Safia and Lydia, having been on the ocean enough, I would let you both make nature checks here. Okay. Since okay. you might know what's happening. Okay. I got a 15. I got a 12. Okay. Um, Safia, interestingly, you probably haven't seen as many of these as Lydia has in your journeys, traveling aboard smaller ships, maybe having to stop at more pirate havens. Um, you recognize this sort of ghostly light that is emanating and sort of pulsing faintly as what's called a Kraken's grave. Uh, when Krakens die, they're, when their bodies rot, they emanate uh, incredible energy out of them, and magical energy. And that energy is dangerous and charged. And so, uh, yeah, avoiding the Kraken's grave, probably a smart move. Sometimes there is treasure down where the Kraken's grave is, because of where a Kraken lives, so too will whatever bounty they happen to have taken from various ships, but that is what you know. Okay, so I this happens to be, and then I open my mouth and I say all that was just said about Krakens and what Krakens' graves are, and then I go, so like there is chance for like a lot of treasure, and I, I happen to be a fan of treasure, and I think Lydia is too, but I know we have a job to do, so it's up to you. You two, I think, can be the, can be the deciding votes, maybe. Do you want to go? Because I can breathe underwater, and uh, I think Lydia has a thing that can let her breathe underwater, but uh, no, okay. if, so we can, like, dive down and just, like, check it out if you want, or, you know, we, we, could, we, could, we could go past it, too, but if we could go check it out, or we could go past it. So what do you think? Do you want to check it out, or do you want to go past? Yeah, I mean it's not my plane that's falling apart. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, on the one hand, I do love treasure. On the other, the sooner we get the gods on our side and on board, the sooner I get to punch a dragon in the face. So I'm a little torn, but I will go with what the group says. Okay. Hey, look, I'd say if there's stuff that might be useful in whatever we're doing here, we All might right. as well go check it out. Uh, is there any part of this plan that lets me stay on the boat and not go diving into the water? Um, yeah, like the boring version of it. Um, but. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, no, you know, it's fine. You know what? If you don't want to go, well, not go, because I don't want you to get left out again, because you already got left out last week, and no. you were kind of like feeling a little tummy ache. So but we'll go, let's do something we can do as a group, right? The real the real treasure is the friends we make along the way, right? So let's yeah. just let's just do that. And the real and I think Lydia would say the real treasure is the dragons we punched along the way. So let's let's just head on north. Um the next Kraken's grave that I come across, I will I will check out. Hey, it's my time. It's me. me time, you know? I mean, right. I'd go down there with you, but I have no idea if I'm a strong swimmer or not. Yeah, that's a good a vote against you coming. That's a good vote against you coming. So, okay, we'll keep we'll keep going. Let's just make a little wide berth around it, and we'll do that. Easily enough, you're able to steer the moray away from the light of the Kraken's grave. Uh, yeah, so y'all can tell that Sophia is just a little bit sulky as we walk, as we go by it. Like, tell us she's a little. It's very much like the kid who's like, "Can we stop at that?" And then everyone, you, like when the family car goes driving by the tourist trap, and the kid's just kind of like, I mean, "Yeah, maybe, maybe the next dinosaur." Not for nothing, Odie looks pretty sad too. Odie was peeking oh. over the edge, like wagging its uh, its tendrils behind it, looking like pretty excited, and watches it go. Hey, you know something that I think might cheer you up a little bit? And uh, Astarok takes out one of the soul the coins. Again? Oh, no. He <laughs> takes out one of the soul coins he still has. Because they're still, like, talk to you a little bit, right? So Astarok goes, watch this. And takes one of the soul coins and just spins it like you do a coin. And the little voice inside goes, ah! Oh, God! <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if that cheers me up or terrifies me in a way. And Odie bats at it to make it spin faster like it's a Harlem Globetrotters basketball. <laughs> yeah, listen to it. It is all mixed up now. Wow, that's, <laughs> that, is, that is super cool. 
so <laughs> many levels of just yeah. Oh, well, right. you, you and your crab and your now quite dizzy soul coin friend eventually <laughs> see in the distance um, what appears to be a beautiful uh, group of homes uh, sort of on a hill, but it's gated. Um, there are pillars. There are pillars with uh, beautiful marble walls, uh, ten foot high in some places, um, around the uh, what appears to be an island city made of marble and copper. Ooh, this is a nice looking place. Ooh, marble. Copper. Ooh, stealing. <laughs> I'm a copper. <laughs> I uh, love marble. There is a uh, a nice fancy marina uh, and boat dock. Um, there are several yachts parked there. Uh, some of which appear to be wood. Some of which appear to be stone of various kinds. Dark granite. There's a jade boat. And those are parked in the arena, dozens of, or in the arena, in the marina, dozens of them. Um, and you're able to uh, find a slip to park your boat in, step onto the dock, which is, uh, again, it, it is made of wood, but it's polished to almost a mirror sheen. Mm. Might be petrified wood, for all you know. Um, and it is absolutely stunning and perfect. All of the angles are 90 degrees, everything is spotless, and uh, you make your way towards the entrance. And as you do, you notice that the colors shift a little bit and change and become more muted. And as you walk through the gate, everything turns black and white. Everything on your person, your hands, your weapons, the homes around you, the trees, everything becomes shades of gray as you walk into the city on this island. Is everyone else seeing things differently now than b before we walked in? Like, is everyone, everything monochromatic for you too? <clears throat> Did we take drugs? We didn't take drugs. Did we take drugs? No, recently. Do you, do you know what monochromatic means? I have no idea, but everything is black and white and like shades of gray. Okay. Yeah, that, that's monochromatic. Oh, <laughs> is that like on the graphic? That's cool. That's... Oh, that's really oh, cool. Oh, maybe it is. It was, I've listened to too many, is it, goblins? Yes. As you turn black and white and you do turn black and white if you're watching the stream. Um, you see families walking down sidewalks. Nice folks. Young mother, young father pushing a stroller, small dog. But the mother and father appear to be statues, statuesque statues. One of them is made of dark marble. One of them is made of uh, sort of a pink quartz and they walk down the street and they wave at you and they say, howdy neighbors, how's it going? Good to see you. Having a nice day out there? Y yes. Mm -hmm. oh, where are, where, where is here? Oh, well you're in Olanton, the perfect city. Good to see you. Yeah, it's nice to make your acquaintance. Nice to make your acquaintance. I'm Vampire54, who says, into the next depths, overcome your fears, etc., etc. It's all out there to find <laughs> it. To find it could help your journey. Hey. And hey. Uh, next to Vampire54, Kaga says, this is a simple thank you to the team for great entertainment. Oh, thanks. Oh, thank you, nice. Thank you, Grab Vampire54. Water, uh, I'll make a big show of drinking. <laughs> And they uh, move along and they say, well, you look like you might be new here. You should stop on by City Hall uh, and let uh, let the mayor know that you're in town. Okay. Is the mayor, is the mayor Afara? 
Oh, you know the mayor. Oh, great. She'd be so happy to see old friends. Yeah, yeah. You should take us to the old friend's entrance. Take us right to her. Well, you can't miss it. We're going to keep walking our baby and our dog, but it's right right up there. And okay. as, as they point, you can see that all of the houses are identical, uh, made of stone, um, ranches, ranch-style homes with beautifully manicured lawns, which Sophia and Lydia, you've never seen before. Usually it's either ocean or wild land. And you haven't seen a perfectly manicured lawn since you were in Ravnica, probably, Tuturu and Astarok. But these are beautifully shorn. Uh, there's someone who's mowing their lawn with a little push mower. They wave to you and give you a nice grin on their face. And they too are statuesque with beautiful stone togas. Howdy, neighbors. How's your day going? It's good. Good. good why are, hey, why hey, are you Lydia. giving her... Yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to ask, why are you giving your grass a haircut? Oh, well, that's because it looks so good when it's freshly cut. Don't you think? Yeah. And they, uh, they sort of run their fingers through the grass a little bit. Nothing better than a freshly cut lawn. All right, everybody. I'm just going to say it. Quietly, this place is off-putting. What are you talking um, about? There's so much stone here. I have never seen so much different types of marbling and stone. Oh my gosh, thinking of all the things I could collect and take back with me and craft. Oh my gosh. Uh. Oh, I'm going to go to uh, the underwater thing with, with Krakens. That's no, we're not allowed to do that. That's fine. Um, here's the thing that I'm worried about is that you two don't know this, but Lydia should. Um, Alanton was a city that drowned. Oh, like if you go to to Melitus and then go south, there's a Neo Lantern, which is basically like. A, a town built on like the border of the ruins of a town that disappeared into the ocean. And this is the same name as that city. Yeah, mm. This seems less under the water than I would expect for a city that drowned. Yeah. Kind of in a way it's like almost like a bummer because like I, I have like swam in the ruins outside of Neolanton and like, this is not what they looked like. So I'm a little bit weirded out by this. Are but I'm the, happy there's stones. Are we in the underworld right mm. now? Or Nyx? We're Nyx. 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 Yeah. Mm. Um, as you're walking down the street, every house is a cookie cutter. Exactly the same. The same tree is out front. The same fences are in between each lawn the same sidewalk, each individual flower in beautiful gray on the same bush in front of every house. As you walk down the street, there's uh, what appears to be someone delivering mail. It says, howdy, neighbors. How's your day going? Yeah, howdy. Still good. Howdy. Yeah. Okay, things nice. Uh, another, another person who has a push cart uh, appears to be delivering some sort of uh, uh, liquid, possibly milk. Says, howdy, neighbors. How's your day going? How's your day going? Oh, it's just peachy keen. Everything's excellent here in the perfect city. Cool. As yeah. they move along, you do see City Hall in the distance. A yeah, uh, slightly larger stone building. This place is waking me out something fierce. I yeah. gotta be real. Yeah, it's a little lackluster as far as everything being the exact same. Everything's yeah. the same. All the people are the same. They they get what looks like milk delivered to them. Uh, I don't... This makes me really uh, more nervous than I am usually when we go out and, and go to places. It's too perfect. Yeah, I don't like being on the land for too long anyway, and especially land that's like weird land. 
Yeah, look, yes, I mean, we back the ball so we can appreciate a well-ordered society, but this is, uh, this is too much. It's too much. Hmm. Well, let's go. Mm. Should we just hurry up and go see what Afar is up to? And Yeah, let's do that. I, 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 I hope that, like, because, like, she and, and my lady, like, me, she and Thassa get along fairly well, and, like, like, so, like, I don't know, I, like, magic has, like, elements to it, and, like, mine is, is, a lot of what I do is, like, about, like, secret knowledge from under the sea, and, like, she's really into knowledge, so I'm hoping that, like, there's some connection there, some bonding, but, um, mm. yeah, um, let's... Yep, on to meet the mayor. So, on to the mayor. So, Sophia and Lydia, it's like all the gods we've met so far seem to have like some type of thing that they kind of are in charge of or like specialize in, right? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. What is Afara? She's like kind of like cities and laws and order kind of mm -hmm. stuff like that. Very urban, likes to protect cities and, and urban places. Oh, well, hey, maybe we'll get along with her well then. I mean, I mean Tutu and I, we're from a city. We're from a, like a big city. Plant, the entire world is the city. Yeah, that's right. Right. Tell you know, oh. We tend to say polis here, but I mean, continue to like. Polis. Polis. That's like the big ones. And then, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, boy, this is a long walk to this mayor's office. Um, I think and you do you do get to the mayor's office eventually, and it does feel longer than it should. The distance is strange, as if the amount you've walked, as you look behind you, you can still see where you landed. The distance is anachronistic to how far you've actually walked. Walked, but as you approach, you do see etched into the uh, mantle above the door. Polis Hall. Um, there are a couple of uh, statue uh, guards standing out front, uh, and they nod to you, and uh, they, they motion your way in, and they hold open the doors. Uh, and as they do, and you walk inside, uh, it is a massive uh, foyer. There is a beautiful mirror shine marble floor in a sort of uh, cylindrical main entrance chamber. There is a central desk that says info on a little sign in front. And sitting at that desk is a being that some of you have kind of have seen have seen before. I don't know if all of you have seen one before, but there is essentially a blue blob person except for that it's gray, sort of a dark gray blob person with one large central eye taking notes at the front desk, uh, has a spectacle, one single spectacle on a chain hanging on its ears. This is a homunculus. And it looks up at you and it says, uh, welcome to Polis Hall. Can uh, Do you have an appointment? Hey, uh, uh, I haven't seen many of you. You're, you're type around here. What type would that be, sir? You know, like uh, little guys who, uh, who uh, look like you have, have one eye and tend to do paperwork for people. We have a bunch of them back where I'm from. Oh, where are you from? Uh, you, you haven't heard of it. <laughs> Trust me. I've heard of a lot of places, sir. Oh, uh, well, there's a lot of places. <laughs> Well, we don't get a lot of your kind around here, too, which is the made of horns and angry parts. <laughs> yeah. No, you got me right on. <laughs> I am pretty angry a lot. <laughs> I don't know. You seem pretty nice to us. They haven't really been that mad around us. Uh, yeah, but I don't, you know, I'm not trying to hit you guys. Not, not that I would. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend that in here, sir. Um, what can I do for you today? We are here to see Ifara. Do you have an appointment scheduled? And they flip their uh, um, clipboard and start looking at today's schedule. Yes. 
Lydia is kind of like trying to take a look over the schedule. Um, oh, I see. Is that uh, there's an entry in there for what looks like Bob? We're Bob. I'm Bob. Hi, Bob. Nice to meet you. Yeah, we're the Bobs. You're Bobs. Bob. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We was we're, our we our ship floats, so we call ourselves the Bobs because we bob mm. on the ocean. Mm -hmm. Make a deception check at advantage. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, I got an 18. Nice. That'll do it. Um, okay. Uh, Bob, your appointment is very soon. I will go get the mayor for you. One moment. And they put their hand over a rune on the table and pff, they disappear from their seat. Whoa. Okay, so maybe if we don't get to go see the mirror, we can just try pushing that rune and maybe we can go. Sure, I mean, yeah. it's worth a shot. We'll try it the right way. Oh. They come back. Just a moment. You can have a seat on those benches over there. And they go back to their paperwork. After just a few moments, coming down uh, a set of wide stairs is uh, Ifara. Ephara, in uh, her current form, is a beautiful woman uh, in purple Nyxborn marble, dark as the night sky. Uh, she has a crown that looks like the top of a column. Um, and she is wearing a, um, a toga, a beautiful toga. And she is purple. And the crown has bits of gold and her waist belt as bits of gold, and this is the only bit of color that you've seen in the city thus far. Well, hey there. Um, you're not Bob. No, but we have something really important that we would like to talk to you about, so uh, I feel like ends justify the means on that one. Yeah, did, did that guy tell you we're Bob? You, you, you can never find good help these days, right? Yeah, I think I heard like a big boat while I was talking, so it was probably like, "Hi, my name is," Aunt, like a boat like honking. So yeah, you must be new here. Hmm. Well, um, I have a few minutes. Um, we can certainly schedule a longer appointment uh, later if you are interested. But uh, what's what's the what? I'm, I'm very busy. I apologize. What's the gist of your uh, purpose for being here? The end of Theros. Preventing, That's, comma, um, prevents, preventing, comma, the end of Theros. I see, I see. Well, I like that better than uh, causing it. <laughs> I guess a comma would come at, I'm not good at, math, at grammar. Quite all right. You're well, heroes from the outside, I take it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't look like you uh, live in Olanton full time. Are you looking to move? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, what are the houses like? Am I right? <laughs> yeah, because they're all exactly the same. <laughs> on the outside, they may look exactly the same, but on the inside, they're whatever you wish them to be. Oh, oh then maybe yes. <laughs> well, I will say that deception is not the best way to start a relationship, mm. but uh, I would be very interested in hearing your story. Um, but... As outsiders, I do need to make sure that you have the best interests of the city at heart. So before I hear what it is you have to say, um, got a couple ordeals for you. Think of the more as chores, mm -hmm. errands. Hmm. That's yeah, not all right. Is one of them mowing or, or, or manicuring a lawn? Because we saw someone do that, and that seems like we could do that. But mm. like, yeah. sure, I'll add that to the list. Oh, oh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to give us more. I'm sorry. Uh, she uh, magically waves a hand at a scroll that is behind her and adds something with a quill. Sorry. sorry. Pulls the list forward and, and it looks and says, um, well, there is uh, a couple of things that we need. Um, Mrs. Charybdis uh, just moved in recently. Um, and I was hoping to welcome her to the neighborhood with a basket of scones that I had made. I don't have time myself to drop by. Perhaps you can drop those off for me. Sure. Um, yeah, go ahead. Where do people move here from? 
Oh, they move here from all over whenever they feel they want to move here. This is where they end up. All right. People from Melitis, from Akros, from the underworld, from other parts of Nyx. Oh, okay. So drop these scones off with Mrs. Charybdis, maybe check in on, on how she's doing. Um, yeah. the, the, yes? Oh, is it to say that sounds easy enough. Uh, I assume the Charybdis house is the uh, the gray one outside with the bush and the, the flower? Yeah, exactly right. You know the one. Um, the Jenkinses have just moved in. Uh, they actually need a couple of chores. Um, they probably could use their lawn mode, since you mention it. But I know that they need the fence painted. So if you could go by and uh, make sure that the fence is in perfect order. Um, we've had a little bit of a problem with the sewer system. I would be very grateful if you could see what's backing up the sewers. And someone, some hooligan, keeps rearranging the hedges in the topiary garden. And we carefully plan those. So if you could go check out the topiaries, that would be just lovely. Okay. So we need to deliver the package to Mrs. And then we need to go to the Cribdis. So then we need to go to the Jenkins house and mow the lawn and help mm -hmm. them with other chores and paint the fence. And then we need to unstuck the sewers. And then we need to figure out what's up with the topiaries. Yep. Okay. And after that, after okay. that, I'll hear what you have to say. And then we can go from there. Does that sound all right to you? You sure you don't want me to just do some push-ups or something? No, thank you. You seem like a nice boy, but I think that we can hold off on the push-ups for now. He's really good at them. So good. I believe you. Well, thanks. Off you go. Okay. She waves her hand a little bit. All right. Uh, she makes a note to the homunculus at the desk and says, uh, pencil in the... Um, I'm sorry, what were your names? Did you have a group name, or would you like to write down your individual? Um, you can write down Lightning Buddies. <laughs> I like it. Why not? The, have the Lightning Buddies come up to the um, to the to the um, to the court afterwards, wow. and she Fox wanders Fox. off. All right, so we're going to Mrs. Corruptus. To drop off scones. Yeah, it was Charybdis, we... actually. Charybdis, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Astroloc, we're going to put you in charge of remembering that name. All right. I'm on scone duty. Bring in the scones to the Charybdises. Yeah, well, we'll go together. Um, I, I'm afraid of splitting our party in this situation. Hmm. You just don't want to leave me alone with pastries, do you? I was well, just going to say, these scones smell really good. <laughs> all right. I can't say you're wrong. Um, I, I actually hadn't thought about that at all, but now that you've said it out loud, like it's a legit thing to be concerned about, I'm 100% concerned about that. So, yeah, definitely that too. Yeah, it seems fair. I could feel my self-control waning already. Mm -hmm. Do these resemble these dough circles that you kept talking about from back home? I mean, there's not a hole in the middle of them, so... Well... Do you want to take a peek? Yeah. I, I open you, up the... You lift a checkerboard napkin, and inside Astarok are freshly made dough circles. <gasps> By the tin guilds. <laughs> Lydia, Sephia, Tuturu, whatever your favorite baked good is, mm. is in this basket. Cakes scones, donuts, whatever it is. And the smell hits you, and it is like home. I need wisdom saving throws. Oh, my. Ooh. All four of you. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I got a four. I got a two. I got a 14. Is this any type of um, 
I do have resistances. Let me see. Features and traits. Safia? I actually rolled a natural 20, so I got a 28. So Perfect. Uh, nice. Uh, not the best You're time good. to roll a natural 20, but it's okay. <laughs> You are able to stave off I, the tempting baked goods. I think I think in character, the reason for that is that I don't think Sophia has a baked good that she really likes because <laughs> she's not really from an area where like people sure. bake like she spends a lot of time under the sea. And like I, I think like for her, like she's not like she's not really a sweet tooth kind of person because she's she's okay. a sea dweller. Uh, I rolled a 14. Okay. Uh you also succeed. Um Astarok and Lydia, you both fail. Um, describe for me your favorite snack, all of you, that might have appeared in this basket. Ooh, um, the basket for Lydia is definitely not just baklava, but it is, um, her, the, the, the recipe that's been passed down from generation to generation. This baklava is so good that you don't get it until the last person who used to make it was on their deathbed, because that's how fierce the family protected the recipe. The, the phyllo is nice and thin. The honey drizzle on it is perfect and gleaning. The little bit of pistachio dust on top is exactly the right uh, percentage. Tuturu? For Tuturu, she would have looked at the baked goods and seen probably little... Um, I mean, she does love scones. She is a big scone person, especially scones that are like um, whatever Ravnica's berries would be. Um, so it would be like a beautiful guild berry scones, the yes. kind you might get at the mind grind in the morning, mm -hmm. just down the street from the old generous stray. And they are baked to a perfect fluffiness and texture. You can see the berries peeking out of the top. Asterok, your favorite dough circles? Oh, these aren't just dough circles. These are 10 street dough circles. These are the ones that you only get out of those weird carts that definitely don't have a license and never mm -hmm. change their grease. And that's the best way to make them. Each yep. one is a fun, different surprise with different levels of crispiness. And, and there's always the little burnt one that was back in the, the bottom of the frying pan. And that's the best one because it soaked up all that delicious sugar and grease and oh, oh, oh. and it looks mm. like all of these donuts are the burnt ones they've all got a little bit of that tinge a little bit of that greasy discoloration from the bottom of the barrel that you get you can only get that crispy crunchy little cr uh, crisp of sugar on one dough circle usually, but this is a whole basket full of them. Safia, not really a sweet tooth though. Nothing, yeah, nothing I really think I think my basket is actually just a bunch of like dried, like a seaweed snack type of thing. Like some very nicely like cleaned and like pressed and dried out, got like a really good intricate seasoning on it and it looks very tasty, but um, you know, not that hard to come across seaweed. So I'm kind of okay to resist it. Sure. So, those of you that rolled lower than a 10, um, suddenly you get this overwhelming sense of, you know, maybe this city's not so bad. Maybe O'Lantern does feel like home. You know, maybe this place is pretty nice. I could see staying here a while. I gotta say, anyway, that makes a dough circle like this. Uh, it can't be that bad a place. What are you talking about? Yeah, I don't. This is all of like my great, 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 great grandma's baklava. Um, and I might be willing to mow a lawn for this. <laughs> yeah, sure it is. I want to reach into the basket and grab one of them out and just pop it on my horn. What do you... Uh, you see Astarok pop a seaweed snack or a baklava <laughs> or a scone onto his horn. Oh my gosh, Astrock, you have a Guildberry scone on your horn. <laughs> a Guildberry scone lacks the proper uh, circle in the middle of the dough circle uh, to go exactly. on the horn. That's how you can tell that it's obviously a treat invented by Minotaurs. <laughs> you look ridiculous. 
ridiculous right now. <laughs> it's just a piece of seaweed. I don't understand what's so funny. It just, I mean, it's weird that he has that on his horn, but. No, I just waited the baklava like fit perfectly on there. Normally I would think that as soon as you put it through the whole thing would crumble, but it's just on there perfect. <laughs> And Lydia just kind of goes up and like bats at it and watches it spin on the horn. <laughs> and it does. But it stays. Like, okay, um, there's something weird happening here because we're all seeing something different. This is like my flag. Um, hey. Oh. You don't think they'll miss one of them, do you? And yes. he takes the one Yes, off I think they will. Oh, no. And just takes a bite of the dough circle. Oh, you're not supposed to eat the food in the weird places. Ah, uh, nobody counted how many were on the thing. Come on. No, oh, no. Asarok, go ahead and make another wisdom saving throw for me. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure the lady who's like the goddess of law and order probably did count how many things were in the... Okay, so I got a dirty 20 this time. Okay, you succeed this time. But you're still enchanted by the island and your, its location. And the, and the, the delicious and, dough circle. And the dough circle. Mm -hmm. uh, you have some chores. You have a list of chores to get to. Where would you like to start? So, Astaroth, was it worth it? How does it, it taste? Is it good? Very good. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's the platonic ideal of a dough circle. It's the it's the platinum ideal for no circle. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, then, where do we want to go first? I think we should take these to that lady because I don't want to have these in our on our possession all day and have him eat all of them. Yep. Well, I'm not going to eat totally all of them. Plan. Yeah, I, I need to get away from away yeah, from my we're, nose. It's not too good. Sophia, do you want to hold these? Yes, I think I should hold these because they're the only one we can get to be able to uh, I'm swayed by this temptation. All right, well, good luck remembering the name like, of the people like, we gotta give count. it to. Well, this is Caramo. Nah. Carp poo poo. Hey, Astrog, I put you in charge of it. Are you gonna let down your, your one job? <sighs> no, I won't eat the dough circles. Oh, no, but what, what, what was her name again? Because I don't remember. Was it Mrs. Caraba? You're not gonna get it out of me that easy. Well, I'm not, we're trying to go to her. Why won't you tell me? Well, I want to be in charge of delivering the scones. Well, you can be in charge, and I'll be in charge of carrying the scones. All right, Sorry. you're not, not scones or seaweed. <laughs> All right, the name was Charybdis. Charybdis. Ah, got it. Lydia, you are now not in it. charge of remembering the name Charybdis. 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 I got it. Locked up here. Everything's Chichiru, tight up here. You are now in charge of remembering the name Charybdis. <laughs> Great idea. I'm a Luxodon. I'll never forget. Perfect. So you're able to make it to uh, the Charybdis home. Um, and uh, there are good directions there. And so you're able to make it there. And you are at a front door. Okay, Astrock, you wanted to be in charge, so you can knock. All right. Boom, 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 boom. One moment. You hear a small, timid voice from inside and some uh, shuffling of feet and opening the door is the tiniest woman. Oh my gosh, this woman is tiny and old. And she opens the door, hunched over. She barely comes up to your hip, Astarok, and she says, oh, hello. Uh, well, hello, ma'am. I'm uh, here to uh, bring you some uh, delicious baked goods. Oh, what a nice boy you are. Come come in, come in, come in, everyone, come in. Well, I mean, you know, she's got baked goods, so don't mind if I do, right? Don't, okay. don't let, don't let Scylla scare you. Scylla's go just going to be fine. Um, you walk in. All right, we'll give it a whirl. <laughs> you walk in and uh, it is like a grandma's house. There are woven tapestries. There are warm couches. Um, there are, uh, there's a box that has holograms playing inside of it. Um, lots of books on the shelves. There appears to be a kettle on the stove. Come in, come in, have a seat. And running down the stairs, you hear, and you see what looks like <coughs> a tiny terrier, except for instead of being a dog, it appears to be a tiny dachshund-shaped lamprey. 
with a circular mouth that has tons of tiny teeth in the middle. And uh, it runs down the stairs and it like jumps up at uh, Sophia and Odie kind of hides in your neck uh, area and makes like a growl, like a low rumble, like a low bubble noise. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, it's fine. Sorry, oh, you know have... it's on strangers. Oh, I didn't see. Oh, we both have um, we both have little krakens. I see. Yeah, yeah. This is this is my little monster. You know. So. Wow, I haven't seen that one. Looks like uh, is that a what what breed is that? Crab. Oh no, no no no. That's not a crab. Yeah, it's a crab. Okay. And she goes back to making tea for everyone. Well, thank you so much for dropping this off. Um, and uh, if you would like to stick around and have uh, have some cakes with me, that would be quite all right. But I'm sure you're busy and have to get <sighs> back to things. Well, I mean, we're not that busy, right? Astarok looks around at everybody. We do. I, I guess if, if you're offering and it's okay if you all want to have something. Of course, of course. I'm, I'm okay, um, but... So, are you moved in? You moved in all right? I just moved in myself. Oh, we're just visiting. We, we don't live here. Oh, okay. Just Vacation. coming through, visiting mm -hmm. some of your family here, or just uh, sightseeing? Yeah, we're just here to talk with the mayor. <laughs> oh, so have you met? So, um, she's quite busy. That, that She's a very nice lady. Is that these from her? Yes. Yeah. And she sent us to do, er she's very busy, and she sent us to do some errands for her. So we have oh, a couple wow. of errands for her that we're doing like this, and then we're going to go to the Jenkins house, and then we're going to unstick the sewer. And excellent, I excellent. Thing. Well, I don't want to keep you too long. Feel free to have some tea and some candy. Um, here, have some have some cakes for the road. And oh, yeah, we'll take that when we get rated by Vorpal Tales. That's perfect. <laughs> oh, thank you, Vorpal Tales. Hey, welcome. Tales. Hey, and uh, she wraps up a little uh, one of the baked goods for each of you from the basket. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. That's oh. heaven. Yes, wonderful. Thank you. Thank I you, owe you all. You are so welcome. Thank you all so much. And and if if your little one wants to come back and play with Scylla anytime, you know, I, I know that my 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 baby's been uh, a little lonely since we moved in. Um, so it'd be good to play with another, I'm sorry, crab. Um, play with a crab, a neighbor crab. Um, I could have, you know, it's fine. And she says, okay, goodbye. Have a, have a, lovely, have a lovely time. And she closes the door. And as, as we're walking down, Sophia's going, don't listen to the mean lady. I don't know what she's saying about you, but it's not nice. Mean lady, that's like the nicest lady we've met this entire time. I think I know something. I think I know something. What do you know? What do you know? I I think that she saw a kraken the way that we saw the baked goods turn into the thing that we want. Ow! Oh, my head hurts. Oh, my head hurts. I'm not thinking again. I'm done thinking. That all oh, that okay. hurt. I'm usually pretty good at thinking, so I will think that thought. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, it was too much. Too Ow. too much. Hey, I know how that is. And he pats Lydia on the shoulder. <laughs> right? Yeah. <sighs> you don't uh, you don't you don't think that Odie is really a Kraken and she just sees it and I don't see it, right? That's not what happened. I think that she just loves Krakens. And so that's every I think every time she sees a pet, she's seeing Krakens. It could be. Yeah. It, that might explain why because her pet was definitely not a Kraken. It was and not. That was like <laughs> So okay. there's some yeah, sort of I like your theory better. Okay, I'm not, cause I don't want anything bad to happen to Odie. I don't want like adventurers coming and trying to kill him for glory and stuff like that. No. That would make me. If there's some sort of enchantment over this place, that might explain why you guys are seeing the dough circles wrong. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. that would probably explain it. Yeah. <laughs> let's go with that thought. Yeah, yeah that seems yeah. like the easiest way to get us to the next house. Let's just do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. So headed to the uh, to the Jenkinses. Yep, let's keep up with the Jenkinses. Let's go. All right. The Jenkinses, uh, Mr. and uh, 
uh, Mix Jenkins are out front watering plants, uh, and they wave and they say, "Howdy, neighbors! Are you stopping by?" We sure uh, are. Yes, we have um, a message from. We're, we have tasks to do for you for Ephara. We are here to paint your fence, and if you need your lawn cut, we will do that too. Oh, excellent! Thank you so much. Um, we've already put on the first uh, the first coat, but she always ma mentions that uh, it needs to be double or triple painted. So, um, uh, if you if you two of you would like to handle that. Um, that would be that would be lovely. And then anyone who wants to help with the lawn and pruning of the shrubs, uh, go go on over to to uh, to Abby. I look over at Tushri. I'm like, that's probably like your thing, right? Like plants and. Yeah, yeah, I can handle cutting the plants. Off. Okay. Yeah, wait, I can do oh. that. I can, yeah, I can. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I, to, to can you like? Just hey. talk to the plants and ask them to stay short? Or just let them grow. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? Okay, let's uh, not put Tutaru in charge of the plants. Um, <laughs> Tutaru, how about you paint the fence? Okay, let's do that, yeah. Okay. Uh, who's painting the fence? Tutaru. Uh, and I, at least one other person. Because we need two um, coats. I, I will help. I will help Tutaru because I feel like our other two are better with knives and swords and things and can cut things better. <laughs> yeah, uh, so Sophia and Tutaru make performance checks or dexterity uh, checks. Mm -hmm. Lydia and Astarok go ahead and make nature checks. Okay. Okay. okay I should have cut the grass. Um, <laughs> this could also this could also be performance. Uh, oh, as you want you to ask? make a pretty lawn. So, uh, okay. Astarok is going to use his uh, once per day uh, uh, fighter skill thing. So he's going to take out. Uh, I guess he can't cut the grass with his axe. <laughs> you can't. You cannot cut the grass with your axe. Well, the grass is <laughs> free, right? Or is it all plants? It's all plants. Yeah, yeah. it, it can't axe cut cannot plant cut life. plants. I mean, to be fair, you're going to cut a giant hole in the ground if you try to use your axe. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is true. You can still use the axe for its bonus without using it to be, like, your thing you're cutting the lawn with. Okay, so Astarok will just uh, use his strength bonus to be like, all right, and just get behind the, uh, the, the push mower that I guess he has and just use his strength to, to push real good. <laughs> Great. <laughs> And I rolled an eleven. Okay. Okay. And that's, is that uh, nature or perform? Because uh, you could also roll performance if you wanted. I rolled nature. Okay. So uh, you may roll performance if you so choose. Okay. Does, let's give that a shot. Does performance translate to Lydia pretends to be helping? <laughs> no, it translates to straight lines and beautiful. Uh, oh um, no. That makes sense. Can I persuade? Yeah the paint to go on right <laughs> you know you no, no you can't you can't persuade the paint to go on right. okay you can't argument, make another argument okay I'll, I'll, I'll see what we can do okay uh, I, rolled I, rolled a 10. No worries. I, I i rolled a, a 19. perfect you know what i'm gonna watch how sophia is doing this and I'm going to try to mimic her as best as possible and be very perceptive to how she's doing this. I will accept that. So <laughs> Astarok and Lydia, between Astarok's like brute strength powering through the grass and Lydia directing the raging bull in the china shop that is Astarok, are able to make a beautiful lawn. And so you're able to pass that challenge. The, the other two just make... Uh... Painting the fence looks so fun that a, a local urchin goes by and goes, wow, if you're having that much fun, <laughs> try to take over I was for trying you. to think of how I can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> We're synchronized painting. Yep. Uh, I rolled a 15. Yep. So I rolled an 18, which I think is pretty good. Um, yes. I don't know what the DC was, but if it's higher than that, this fence ain't getting painted today. Nope, um, this was not so, that high of a DC. Yeah, I think the way that I did it in character is I use mending like I would like 
like I would see spots that needed the paint to be fixed and I would use mending to like make the paint like adjust and fill in like little gaps and stuff like that. And then I, I see Tuturu watching me and like trying to figure out how I'm going to do it. And so I walk over to her after I've done like a pretty good job. And I, and I say, I kind of, Hey, you know what, Tuturu? Like, I feel like you got this because I already did a coat and I feel like this is already up to uh, the homunculus ordinance uh, administration standards. Of course, the HOA, as they taught it. Um, so I am going to go ahead and just like let you do the last coat because you got this. And I put my hand on her shoulder and then you feel like just a little bit of like warmth of like, like oh, yeah. a little more fluidity to your motions, perhaps. Like, like you've got this blessing because I just gave you guidance. Oh, yeah. Perfect. So, that's a D4. Uh, that is a D4 added to your previous roll. Yes. All right. And that's plus that's 17. So I'm like, yeah, definitely. And so I, I get a little bit more flourish in my my painting and uh, I get it done much, a little bit faster, a little bit more zip in my step and everything. And I bump that wow. up to 17. Thank you all so much. This is the lawn is beautiful. The fence is painted. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be sure to let we'll be sure to let Afara know how helpful you you know you find folks are. Have a, a is there anything that we can get for you? Do you want some water? Are you good? Got any pastries? <clears throat> we probably have some pastries. Um, I'll go I'll go check. I'll take some uh, water. And- Water would be great. Yeah, water's so good. So they, uh, uh, Abby comes back out with a pitcher of water and some glasses, uh, and a basket of what look like cookies, um, although they are dough circles to Asterok. Yeah. Um, and holds out and says, "Feel free. Go ahead." Oh, thank you so much. And he takes another and, and puts it onto his horn, which the other one is also there now. So he's got two of them. Perfect. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Sure. I'm saving it for later. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. You gotta save for things like this, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know what they say: with, with wherewithal, near afar, wherever you are, I believer that the heart does go on. <laughs> that is Cheers what they say. That. Yeah, right. I heard that. And uh, they pour some waters for you as well. Um, those of you that drink the water make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, I should have known. Nothing's free. No, I didn't drink the water. <laughs> I got a another natural 20 on my wisdom save. <laughs> Did you also get a natural 20? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I got a 10. 10 passes. So you're all, you're all succeed this time. Uh, even though it's nice, crisp, clean water, the right temperature, um, it's it doesn't make you feel like staying here any more than you already do. I just yeah. got lucky I didn't drink the water. <laughs> I think that, <laughs> I think I'm like I I can get water. Like that's not nothing's really gonna entice me to stay. Like 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 water I can handle. Yeah. Sure. I kind of worship water. So. <laughs> well, have a great day, uh, and we'll see you soon, new neighbors. Uh, again, we're just on vacation. We're just visiting. Oh, um, but... I'm, yes, I apologize. I forgot. That's right. Yeah. Boy, these um... people ain't bad. Yeah, they all seem really nice. They they love uh, saying howdy. That's an interesting word I've never heard before. But they're all just really nice folks. Uh, I have a question, Ruben. Yes. Um, when we are succeeding on these saving throws, are we having any sort of sensation that something is trying to pull us towards this, or are we not noticing anything? No, I wouldn't say that any, you sense anything nefarious. Okay. Um, you don't sense anything conscious. There's nothing inherently uh, that feels like uh, danger here. Okay. It's, it's more of this place can have an effect on it. You know, you feel like you want to stay. Uh, it's not a... Um, okay. It's not so much a... Like compulsion like effect. A compulsion effect. Okay. Yeah. So it's not. Uh, I mean, it is, it's not like we feel like we're resisting a charm spell or something like correct. that. Correct. It is charming. Boy, this place is charming, mm-hmm. but it is not a charm effect. Okay. Can I? Is it? Is it fair to say for me that with my high wisdom and the fact that I have blown through both yes. these checks, can I at least be a little bit suspicious of this place because it feels very? Say, okay. I would say that even after the first one, you were already were role playing as suspicious, and certainly after the second one. 
you can definitely sense that there is something about this place that can that, that the people who come here rarely leave. Okay. Hmm. So yeah, you definitely get a sense that there's something there's something in the water. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna say we know that we stop eating treats that are that are offered to us here because there's um. <laughs> it's kind of like I don't know if you ever heard stories about if like you go to the wrong Seder picnic and then the Seders offer you like food or like the like like the water or like a like a drink. Sometimes you regret it a lot, and I think that we should maybe think about that. Like imagine that we wander into like a Seder thicket thicket and like. Things could go south real fast. Yeah, okay. no, I think something's lost cross culturally there. But uh, I mean, into a couple of satyrs this series. <laughs> ah, hey, oh, everyone's yeah. welcome to Seder. Um, do you do you have do you have like fey folk in? No, nope, sure you don't. Walk. Okay, but we got I, ghosts. I, we have ghosts. I'm gonna assume it's kind of like. Signing an Orzov contract without reading the terms. Hmm. Okay, if that keeps you from doing things you shouldn't do, then yes, that's exactly what it's like. All right, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to agree not to eat any more dough circles, but I'll keep an eye out. Well, we got to go to the sewer, so please don't eat uh. anything there. I don't yeah. know, like, why is she having us do all of this, like, chores? Like, that we're, we're trying to save Theros here. Hey, you know, I don't mind too much. It's like being back on my beat, you know? You, you got to kind of get to know the people you work for. And, hell, this place seems like it could use, you know, a, a good cop walking the street, making everybody feel safe. Well, actually, that's the thing that's suspicious, suspicious to me, because suspicious. That's the thing that's suspicious to me, is that... Ephara is the goddess of order and and like law and so like she has the ability as a goddess to kind of craft and mold cities so I don't really understand why these tasks need done to begin with because if she has a perfect city here then why does it have flaws that people who don't live here need to fix so something is fishy and not in the fun way of fish that are like my buddies and friends but fishy in the way like mortal humans say it um and I'm I'm suspicious. I'm sorry. I well, I, I don't want to be. I want to. I like to be Lady Go with the Flow, Captain Splash, and all that kind of stuff. But I also don't want to get stuck here because this is not water. Well, all I'm saying is, you know, maybe a city's not a perfect city unless neighbors help each other, right? Am I right? Howdy, neighbor. Oh no. <laughs> hey, neighbor. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna put my hand on Astarok and I am going to cast um, Lesser Restoration on him. Okay. Uh, and you do so. And Astarok, you'd only failed one save, right? Mm-hmm. So you feel back to how you felt originally. Like, wow, that is kind of weird. Little, little strange that I feel I felt so obsessed for a minute there. It's a nice place, but I mean, I don't know. It's still pretty nice. Everybody here is so polite, and it's not water, which is my favorite. But if I had to like stay in a water, a not water place, I think I'd definitely stay here. Wait, Lydia, you would leave Thassa and come to Afara City? Ooh, how enchanted is Lydia with after? Not, not that enchanted. All right. I mean, look, it's cool, but it's not that cool. I, I'd have okay. to, yeah. But but something, I don't know. It just it this feels very home like. But of course, wherever my home is is where Thass is. So if Thass is not here, then we're not hanging out. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, I'm just uh, you know, you gotta enjoy it while you're here. I do admit, I, I think I lost track of how off putting the place looks for a moment there. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I, Astrock, Can I put you in charge of remembering how off putting it is? If it, if I do you do that, will you be responsible for that? I mean, I could try. Clearly, okay. I'm not all that good at it. Okay. Um, all right. Um, let's go to the sewers. I might be able to do, like, just some watery stuff in the sewers, hopefully. Um, so, um, yeah. All right. 
right. So you head on over to uh, a a sewer, and there's an open uh, cover uh, and some uh, cones, some marble cones out. Uh, you look down into the uh, into the the hole there, and you can see that there is a ladder, about a twenty foot ladder that descends onto a platform, and there's water that runs next to it. Um, and I have a map up here on the roll twenty for you, if you are interested in taking Ooh. a look. Uh, you are on the surface. This is sort of a side view, um, and you can look down. Uh, it is dark down there. So unless you have dark vision, you wouldn't really be able to see. Okay. I do have dark vision. Um, does anybody have the ability to make some light for Lydia? Um, well, I have uh, goggles of night. So oh, I right. have dark vision out to a range of 60 feet. I forgot you had that. Great. So you're able to look down the, the hole. Uh, it's about a five foot wide hole. Uh, all of you could fit in it, should you so choose. It looks like the water uh, below you is stopped up a little bit, but there is also a sidewalk area uh, for you to uh, descend onto. So what's the problem again? They said the sewers are stopped up. All right, so we just got to unclog these somehow. Yeah. Ooh. So let's go down to the sidewalk area because that hopefully isn't like a place that's designed to be splashed by the sewage. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not used to this. This is like really complicated. I'm used to like aqueducts in the city that are just kind of like flowing from place. This is like way more intricate. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Who's going down first? I guess I will because I was kind of like the one pushing for it. And I'll follow for sure. All right. I'll go. All right. And I'll bring up the rear. Brings up the rear. <laughs> I cannot see either. I don't have um, dark vision. Um, oh, okay. Oh, can I see? <laughs> I don't know if I can see. Let's see. I don't know if you can see either. Where does it show that again on the... the It'll yeah. be in your senses. Uh, possibly in your skills as well. Uh, I don't believe that... If you, uh, go to, if you go to features and traits and click racial traits, it'll tell you in that list. Great. So, Safia, you're leading this... Uh, expedition down into the sewers and you look left and you look right make a perception check for me okay that is a 19 okay um about 60 feet in one direction you see that there is a bit of a blockage uh there appears to be some trees of some kind maybe some pillars uh and with your 19 you can also tell that there was a little bit of movement in the water. Yeah, it tracks. Um, I'm going to go kind of like make a quiet noise to everybody. And then I'm going to try my bet. Or actually, I'm going to look at Lydia. And I'm going to be like, I'm going to make like a motion, like tiptoeing. So I'm like saying to you, sneak over and take a look and see. Tell us what you see. You want yourself. me to sneak over and tell you what tell you what I see? Yes. Okay. Wait, where are we sneaking? No, just just lit. I mean, it's probably not going to matter now, but just sneak. We're just going to sneak over. How just does just this place smell? Uh, make a perception oh, check. Poor, poor Tuturu. At advantage oh, yeah. because you get advantage with your uh, keen senses. Is it an advantage though, or is it a disadvantage <laughs> right now? <laughs> no, because well. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm advantage and I'll, you. Explain, yeah. I'll explain why. Yeah. Uh, you said, um, what is this for? Perception? Perception. Perception. With your snout. Um, perception is a plus five. Cool. So 17. Um, 17. Okay. You sniff around and it, it, this is the best smelling sewer you've ever smelled. Which low you bar, would, right? <laughs> I mean, this <laughs> smells better than most places in cities, hmm. which is very odd. You would say that this sewer may not have ever been used. Um, it is pristine. It is clean. It smells wonderful. All right. So Tuturu, as she... Get, as I get down into the sewer, she's like, ha I have my trunk like curled up because I'm expecting the worst smell possible, especially after being in like the Ravnica sewer area. Mm -hmm. And then as I like slowly unfurl it and smell, I'm kind of like, 
And I'll like sniff around and kind of sniff into the walls and stuff and like maybe like sniff around like Lydia's shoulder or something and like kind of like this there's no smell. This there's no smell. There's this place hasn't been used for anything. I don't think there's sewage in here. You're muted. I can't hear you. We get that you're trying to be quiet, but (laughs) you're being very quiet. I think that's a plus. I was, I was trying. My, I didn't want my keyboard clacking. I was thinking of notes. Um, I, I think that's a. I think that's a plus. But again, I'm telling you, this place is weird. I have said it over and over again. Do people not go poop or anything here? I, I don't want to think about that. I just don't want to stay here much longer. Um, okay. Well, Let's I didn't go. want okay. to think about no. it, but now I am. I know now. It's all I can think about. It's like I'm trying to think about literally Sorry. anything else. That's just imagining people not poop. And they, like, they have got to be just like all day long. Like, yeah, just so like really up. stuffed up, you know? Yeah, yeah she's really uh, pleasant for people who are Lydia, at the, as you're sneaking along, make a perception check for me. Ooh, okay. Uh, do, do, do. Come on, baby. That is a 14. Okay. Um, Lydia and Safia, both of you noticed this movement in the water, and as you get within about 20 feet, you do see something large and apparently crocodile-shaped water in front of you. Large, large crocodile. Um, I am... Does it seem, does it seem like it has noticed us yet? Uh, it, it has noticed you. Okay. I'm going to try using my emissary of the sea capability to communicate simple ideas to beasts that can breathe water. Uh, and I'm just going to say, hey, Croc. Let me see if crocodiles breathe water. And amphibious creatures. They can hold breath. I will say that it understands you because that sounds like more fun. It like understands you, but it, it hears you with a like pretty severe accent. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you say, "Hey, Croc." I mean, technically, I can make myself speak Aquan if I wanted to, but I was trying to use a natural ability. Um, um, hi. Um, what's up? Hey, we're not we're not trying to like do anything. We just we were asked to come check out why things were so stopped up down here. Um, do you are you do you know why? I mean, yeah. Could you undo it? Why? Because Afara would like it done. But but this is my trap. Who are you trying to trap? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Why am I trying to trap? I'm not asking your business. Well, I was just trying to find a way to help you. I was gonna like maybe like suggest alternatives to the situation. <laughs> When's the last time you actually got food down here? long time yeah that's what i was thinking ain't been no you go no it's fine <laughs> ain't been I a long it's been, it been a long time okay um so i just want to let you know that outside this town there's like a whole open ocean and there's lots of stuff out there there's even a kraken graveyard that looks pretty cool so you could just go out there and you can get lots of food and you wouldn't have to hide a sewer to get it. Um, but I like it know. here. Why? It's nice. <laughs> I've been, I mean, I've it been actually here. is. It's weirdly nice for a sewer. You are correct about that. And like, uh, I, I know, I know, being a sewer gator is great. Um, it's real um, good. Yeah, I know that. Like, it's weird because I always heard sewer gators were a polis legend, but apparently real. Um, so mm-hmm. I, I just, but what if? What if not, though? <laughs> oh, hey, Thank Q times, thanks for the raid. Thank um, you, Q times, for the raid. raid. <laughs> yeah. um, but what if, like, what if, what if instead of being a sewer gator, you were like an open seas gator? Mm. Make a persuasion check. Okay. Can you we can understand add... Sophia's side of the conversation? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm, I'm think, I think I'm speaking common. I'm just communicating. Okay. Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know if you can or not. I just like communicate simple ideas. I will say that it sounds like she's speaking common, 
but she's speaking it like this. <laughs> so you're getting the oh. gist of it. I was getting ready to say, I think it's less that I'm speaking and more like like the way animals communicate with like body language and like simple ideas are being. So yeah. you, you've like been using gator body language, like doing rolls yeah. and stuff. <laughs> That's amazing. Shake, shaking the tail a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Make persuasion. If you have animal handling, you may uh, you may add that as well. Okay, well then I will do that. Uh, that is a that is a thirteen for animal handling. Okay. That sounds tempting. Yeah. This city, this city is super nice. I've been I've been down here a long time. It's super mm-hmm. nice. I don't, well, wa- I don't th- really want to leave. That's the thing though. This city is so nice that no one is using the sewer. So like any other city you would have it like made in the sewer. But because you're living in this city, you're just going to sit down here waiting for people to show up because it's never been used. And it won't be used as long as you're blocking it off. So you kind of got yourself in like, 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 look, you could be a gator facing to the left and like have more things, or you could be a gator facing to the right and be lesser than. But right now, you're kind of just like a, like a gator, which is equalized. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Um, my gator mouth ain't open, so it ain't greater or less than. Exactly, it's equal, it's equal to. to. Yeah, it ain't gator or less than. <laughs> gator. <laughs> that, that that makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. Listen, I'll tell you what. I I ain't leaving. I can't I ain't going I I can't leave this place. I like it too much. Okay. But here's the I'll move, I'll leave this place for this this one, this little section here. You want yeah. me to leave this little section? Alternative plan. If you just unstick your trap. See, the thing is your trap is a thing that's keeping people from coming. So if you just like undo the trap, they'll come down and you'll just You'll grab them. They're not these people mm. here. They're, just simple folk. they're not gonna. They're not gonna know. They're probably gonna say hi, neighbor, and then you're gonna eat them. So that's fine. Howdy, neighbor. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Howdy, neighbor is actually code for I am a delicious treat yeah. for a gator. That's code. That's like that's like a dinner bell. They say howdy, neighbor, and I go mmm dinner. Yeah. Like how's your day been? You'll go better now that you're here, and I'm gonna eat. That's you. right. Good yeah. eats. All right. Yeah. I'll let you do that. That's fine. We'll cool. uh, I'll, I'll clear this up for you. Cool. I appreciate. Hey, you know what? I just want to say. Thank you for being so cooperative. Very kind of you. You know what? You're welcome. All right. All right. All right. We're gonna yeah. go. Y'all have a good day. Wait, wait, wait. What? What the hell just happened? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I talked to the Gator, and he's cool. Oh, what's he want? He well, you know what? Here's the thing. Turns out he just likes to hang out down here to like catch things. But I explained to him that like no one's using it because he's down here catching things so he's going to clear the way so the sewers open up again and Actually, then we'll just... hey 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 hey! Yeah. i see that uh, i see that your horny friend there has uh has some stakes on his horn uh maybe i could get one of them this crazy oh well i can't understand that yeah. uh, <laughs> let's assume for the moment you can hey, understand i, I translate it for you we'll, we'll yeah. cut we'll cut out that for for streaming sake but i go right hey Andrew, uh the gator wants the doe circle that's on your horn do you mind giving him like one of those uh, well, I mean, they're meant to be shared. I grab one off and I toss it to the gator. Greater than. Snap. <laughs> mm, I sure do like this city. And he swims off. All right. And the, the sewer is clean. All right, let's head back. That's that's three. Well, by the way, and we once, once we get back out of the sewer and we're on the street again, I'm going to go, we should tell Afara to never let anybody else come down there again because he yeah. will be down. Oh, yeah. but as as the gator yeah. swims yeah. off, it says, "Oh, by the way, uh, Diana Moon wanted me to tell you, uh, I got a four a.m. interview. Yay, hero zones! But I could use all the dough circles and scones related good vibes. I believe in you, broken pactors." And it uh, I, s- swims off after that. Uh, Diana Astra, Moon can off tomorrow in your interview. Uh, Astra good takes luck. off a vibe dough circle and throws it off into the ether. <laughs> <laughs> Vibes? Yes. Okay, if, if that girl wakes up tomorrow and there's a, dose, a donut at her house, <laughs> right? the world is the best thing ever. Yeah. All right. You have successfully unclogged uh, the sewer. And now you make it uh, to your last chore. There is a beautiful topiary garden uh, that you see. A massive, huge place. Lovely 
tons of per perfectly manicured lawn again lovely trees um shaped into different uh dinosaurs it looks like there's a pleosaurus shaped hedge there is a uh triceratops there's a stegosaurus um you look around and it is all dinosaurs all the time there is however one uprooted topiary in the center of the garden okay oh no teacher will run over to it okay um make a nature check yeah if, if any task was obviously the too true task <laughs> it was not this one um oh no teacher runs up and she kind of looks at it but maybe it's because it's black and white and she's or it's made of stone i don't know but with an eight she looks at it and is perplexed Okay. I'm As shocked you, if anything, this seems like you were an obvious plant for this one, so. <laughs> As you approach, uh, you actually step into brambles. Oh. Uh, and uh, you actually, uh, your movement is slowed to half, and you take three damage. Ooh. And Ow. as you do, you hear the rumbling of the topiary that has been destroyed in the area as it comes to life. And a huge T-Rex topiary emerges. Roll initiative. Oh boy, Whoa. everybody. Whoa. I've got bad news about my special skill set. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna be super <laughs> relevant. Rock, you have a fancy lightning javelin. When you're right, you're right. <laughs> it had to happen accent. eventually. <laughs> All right. All right, my T-Rex. Plus Choo -choo, are you gonna be okay fighting this thing? Cause it looks real scary and mean. You know, sometimes, sometimes you gotta prune a plant. Yeah, you know, I occasionally have to like beat up sharks. So I feel like I'm with you on this one. I'm like, yeah. not, not everything under the sea is nice. That's all I'm just gonna say. Yeah, I fight all sorts of things. All right. Um, you got an award for it. Let's see. Uh, Lydia, I rolled an eight. Your initiative. Eight. Eight. Wish that this would let me add turns. That would be nice. Add turn. Eight. Okay. Uh, Asterok. I got a 17. Okay. Uh, Tuturu. Ten. And Sophia. Uh, I also got a 17, and but I think Asterox is a little bit uh, higher than mine, so I let him go ahead of me. Okay. Now, I'm seeing myself on the turn order like five times. Yeah. Is that correct? I, I'm, I put Lydia in there four times because well, I couldn't seeing, select sorry, the Lydia, individual. Not. I couldn't select the individual tokens for some reason. Gotcha. Huh. It was very annoying. Um, anyway. Yeah, but you, the 17... we, don't, we don't have control over our tokens to move them. Right. Yeah, I didn't add you all to these tokens, but I will right now. Um, and Astarok will have you go up first. Okay. So Astarok uh, sees the Astarok sees the topiary uh, thing and kind of looks at his axe and is just like, Ugh, "Well, I knew this was going to come back to bite me at some point," and grabs his lightning javelin and kind of flips it once and goes. All right, buddy, let's give you a test drive. And uh, he's just going to uh, lightning javelin. Okay. Go which, ahead and roll an attack. Let me, because it, it does it does the thing where it, it, go, it go all lightning-like. Yes. Let me remember how that works. It's a magic weapon. When you hurl it and speak its command word, it transforms into a bolt of lightning, forming a line five feet wide and extending out from you to a target within 120 feet. Each creature in a line, excluding you and target, must make a DC 13 dexterity saving throw, taking 46 lightning damage on a failed fails. save. Oh boy! I fails it. So the, the, the command word is lightning friends. <laughs> Aww. And, Excellent. Uh, and yeah, I launch it for, I, I launch the, the uh, javelin, which just as soon as it leaves my hand, like becomes just ethereal. Flies past him 
And, and, and uh, so you roll to attack, and it takes the extra lightning damage, yeah? Yeah. Great. Uh, actually, I think it just takes... Oh, yeah, it does. It does take the uh, normal damage. You are correct. So go ahead and roll to attack as well. Okay. So my attack roll is... That is an 18. That hits. Okie dokie, and the damage is 1d6 plus 5. And then after that, it'll be an additional 4d6. Yep, okay, so it takes Great. 6 damage without the lightning damage. Okay. And then it takes... Ooh, this is not a good roll. Uh, and then it takes 10 damage, so 16 total. All right. The lightning javelin slams into the T-Rex and the lightning hits and then the thunder bursts and it takes both types of damage uh, as it hits in the center and some leaves go flying out of it and it goes, Rah! Ooh, that feels good. <laughs> uh, Sophia. All right. 17, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am going to. Um... Okay. I am going to run up to it, uh, and then I'm going to make a jab at it with my rapier. So before you do that, okay. as you enter... Oh, wait, the brambles. I probably wouldn't. I forgot, I forgot. I saw Toots do that, so I won't do that. Okay. Um, instead, I'm, I'm already... So I think it yeah. was 20 feet up to you, up to the edge of the circle. Okay. That's where it was at? 20 feet to the edge was where the ramble started? Yeah. Uh, 15 feet from the T-Rex. Okay. Okay, so I'm not going to go... Okay. Then instead, I'm going to stay where I'm at, and I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. And so right next to the T-Rex, uh, I'm going to cast that. And I think I'm going to go ahead and cast that at... Um, do I have the slots for that? Uh, I'm going to cast that at level four, so it does a little more damage each time. All righty. Um, so I'm going to do that. And so this time around, uh, what appears in front of the T-Rex is actually a, a crocodile because of my new friend. And oh, okay. it's going to like nice. pop up. And it actually looks like, you know how like the image of the crocodile you were doing where like its head's over the water? It looks like that, but then you don't see its body. It's almost like it's coming out of like a reality, a hole in reality itself. And until it leaps forward and bites and then goes back into it again so now Excellent. it's going to make its first attack um okay well that's not the best that is only going to be a 14 14 is greater than its armor class so oh hey. great nice. Good to know. okay and then i'm going to be doing uh that was a uh, level four so that's going to do 2d8 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 Level one geek, thank you so much for the raid. Ooh, hey, thank you, welcome. Level one geek. Hey, uh, what's up, everybody? Well, luckily, I actually just somehow managed to roll max damage on that, so I rolled two Woo. eights plus five, so that is what, that's 23 damage to it. Nice. Wait, that's not right, that's not true. That Wait. is uh, 21 damage to it, sorry. Okay. Oh, I'm not good at math. Quite I, don't all right. math I don't math well. As, as the uh, spectral alligator says, I got this, and takes a big old bite out of uh, mm -hmm. the salad T-Rex. Okay, and that was a bonus action, and now for my actual action, now that I've done some damage to it, now I'm going to cast Toll the Dead on the T-Rex, so I need to make a Wisdom saving throw. Nice. They're probably not very wise. 11 is the total. It does not succeed, so let me go ahead and roll that, um, and I'll just do that in uh, D&D Beyond and make it go faster. Okay. All right, so that's going to do... Ooh, that's going to do Ooh. 20 necrotic damage. That oh, is a great nice. Nice. Yeah, about 9 and 11. Is so forget. many necrotic right. damages. Yeah, wow. so uh, that happens. Um, and uh, I think that's my turn, which feels like enough. Um, yeah, feels like so, enough. That was pretty yeah. good. So I'm going to I'm gonna be happy with that. Okay. So yeah, you, you hear this like, just like distant echoing bell, like like the one like kind of the kind of bell that you hear like a fog, like like in a foggy night on a ship, like the dinging of a bell, like so like a ship's letting someone oh. know there's a fog. Not a horn, because this is it's it's, it's oh, like right. more sure. of a, a yeah. ancient Greek, like a ding ding ding, like a, like a buoy ding. almost kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. it. Yeah, excellent. Uh, it'll now be uh, my topiary T Rex's turn. The topiary T Rex is going to. Roar and move into melee with both Sophia and Tuturu. Mm -hmm. 
I make one attack with a bite and one with a tail, and I can't make both attacks against the same target. So since I'm running in this direction, I'm going to bite Sophia yeah, and tail fair. smack Tuturu. The bite, plus 10 to hit. That's a 16. It does hit. All right. This deals uh, 4d12. Oh, oh nice. Okay. Plus 7. Jeez. Um, Thirty piercing damage. Woo, wow! And you are grappled. Okay. Uh, question. Yes. When when Astarok hit it with a lightning, did it seem yes. like it took all that damage? It did. Okay. It cool. Like it took so all that I need your I need your T Rex to go ahead and make a uh, a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> Seven. Yeah, it fails. So I'm going to go ahead and roll two d8s. And so when it bites me and grapples me, I glow, and then like a like almost like a like a like dropping an electric eel, I just suddenly just like send out a wave of shock to it, and it's going to take, uh, well, it's only going to take two lightning damage because I rolled a pair of ones. So my good luck for the previous <laughs> rolls right. has now Evens run out. out. But it's, you know what? It helps. Everything a little yeah, bit helps. Every little bit um, helps. So a little bit, but because I did, uh, I did cast a lightning spell on it. I can push it ten feet away from me. Okay. Pushed. We'll push it. We'll push it real. Yeah, I'm not gonna push, we'll push it, it into Tudoru. So I push it like. Away. Push it go for the side. it if you need to. Yeah, uh, but it, it, you are grappled, so okay. you can push it, but it would take you with it. Okay. Um. Then I wouldn't do that because I'll, I'll let it stay where it's at then because I don't want to move into it, the brambles. So. Well, it looks as if the brambles move with it. Okay. Um, its area of effect is brambles. Then you know what? I will push it because I want to push since it only has attacked me so far. I'm pushing it out of the. I'm pushing it um, so it's no longer within engagement range of Tutaru. Okay. We can do that. Uh, I do have some movement left, so I would be able to keep moving. Okay. I tried. Um, yeah, but I will say that it's not. Uh, does mm. do, does she get an attack of opportunity? Mm. Or is that only if well, you move? No, because no, I'm grappled, I'm grappled by it, so it wouldn't, move, it wouldn't be moving into my yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you push it like it runs. You push it, but it can run back to its spot. It's got it's got fifty feet of movement. Mm. So, uh, and now the tail is going to come at Tuturu. Uh, Eighteen to hit you. Yep, that hits. And this is only 3d8 plus 7. Only. 15 bludgeoning damage right. as it goes whomp into your side, and it's basically a tree trunk slamming into you. Whew. Okay. Uh, that's it for the T-Rex. Uh, the 10, I think, was Lydia. That was me. Oh, oh it's it's Tuturu. They're yeah. all Lydia's in my turn order because I couldn't individually select because <laughs> I'm very it's stupid. Lydia's all the way down, it's baby. Exactly. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, Tuturu. Yeah. Uh, that uh, that T Rex turn just changed up everything. Tuturu just saw uh, Sophia just take a ton of just a big old bite. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. This T Rex. Uh, I'm going to try and, uh, Tutu's going to look really panicked at Sophia and try to see if she's bleeding out. Um, let's say like if, if you had to put a number on, <laughs> on someone's health, yeah. Yeah. let's say you just saw Sophia take about half of her total level of health in okay. one attack. Okay, this, this sounds not good. Yeah. Not great, not great. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, optimism. She's still halfway full. Right. She's also half halfway full, empty. Glass, glass. Body half full. The, the, the Sophia is half full and half empty. So half, <laughs> right. half my so, blood is gone. The other half right. still going strong. On a scale of like 1 to 59, how good do you feel? Uh, <laughs> I would say, if I had to put it, I'd say 29 out of 59. Right. Great. Hmm. Okay. And I took 30 in that last attack. So I am now within the range that literally any more hits could take my entire health away. <laughs> No problem. Um, well, oh, crud, I was going to like try to bless everyone, but I feel like I would probably heal you. Okay, 
Well, so you don't have to. I mean, I would I would be totally understandable if you wanted to like work on the plus. Like I, I, in character, Sophia would not be asking you to heal her. Yeah, so. that's fair. I mean, I guess you know how to take care of yourself too. Um. Okay. Can does bless like up the AC if I up a level? What does that do? No, it does not. Okay. Cool. All right. So Tutru is going to uh, cast a level one bless. Um, yeah. Tutru is going to cast a level one bless. Okay. Targets? Uh, targets are going to be, or sorry, level two bless. So yep. that's going to so target everyone. Everybody. Yes. You're all hashtag blessed. Yeah. So um, she's going to basically um, grab her like, um mace kind of hold it close to her chest uh close her eyes and like s say something to mott celestia and when she opens them her eyes turn green um lots of wind swirls around her and then again it like pushes down to the ground and when that happens you see the leaves pop up around everyone else and start swirling around them um to show they're blessed great yeah mm. uh and after that staying staying right where you are i assume uh, uh, I'm if I move, I'm gonna take bramble damage. If you move, you would take uh bramble damage and attack of opportunity, probably. Fun. Um, yeah, I'm gonna sit right where I'm at because I'm I can take some hits. Okay, Lydia, <laughs> it's now your turn. Okay. Um, well, so I'm going to have to dash over. Can I dash and make it? I can. Um, so yeah, I'm you'll, you'll be able to make. Dash. Okay. So I'm going to dash and then, uh, do I get a bonus action with that? Yeah. Right. You actually have thir it, It's exactly 30 feet worth of movement to get to the T-Rex. I just counted. Great. So I can so, do, uh, yes. I can do you a actually, bonus action. You, yeah. You can do a bonus action. You can do an action too, because you don't have to use your. Oh, wait, you, you didn't dash because you, you use your actual movement speed. So yeah, right. I use my movement speed. Yeah, so you can you can do an action and a bonus action. Okay, cool. So I oh nope, that was the wrong one. I don't want to use that. I and it is definitely engaged with your allies, so you will get sneak attack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there it is. Um, so I attack with my rapier, um, okay. and that it, I roll fifteen. Fifteen hits. Perfect. Pretty easy to hit this thing. <laughs> um and so the damage is 10. all righty that was your action yes uh you did did you roll sneak attack damage with that uh no i didn't but i can't so go ahead and oh roll. and don't forget you're blessed blessed right. the blessed, blessed would be the blessed would be to help you hit but since you already hit that oh, yeah. will we'll, we'll let that one go for now but you get sneak attack damage which Sweet. is be some amount of d6s 15 more uh, my sneak attack damage is 15. I just Okay. Wow. All nice. right. So that's 25 damage for your attack there. Nice. Uh, and you have a bonus action left. Um, I'm having so much fun uh, hitting this thing. Um, bonus action, dash disengage or hide action. You know what? I'll skip it. I'll skip okay. it because I don't want uh, As you entered the brambles, by the way, you did take... Three piercing damage. Um, and uh, Sophia, you also took three piercing damage. I just keep rolling one okay. and two on these d4s. Um, because it came into your space and the brambles appeared up around you. Okay. Top of the round, it is Astarok's turn. So Astarok is standing a bit off at a distance because he, he can't really like get to this thing and he sees everyone kind of like caught in the brambles and stuff and goes, all right, here goes nothing. Um, does it seem like the brambles are on the ground or are they like in the air all over the place? They are, uh, it's mostly ground cover, I would say. What? Uh, uh, maybe and, four four feet up-ish. And they uh, seem, they're, they're like 15 feet around it, you said? Yeah, it's in like a, like a rose bush of 15 feet around the T-Rex. Okay, um, Astarok wants to, like, get down into a run pose and try and run and, like, as best as he can, vault over the brambles and try and just, like, land yeah. his uh, horns right into the middle of the bush. Sure. 
Love it. Uh, okay. I will let you do that. Make an athletics check okay. for me. I should be able to jump about 20 feet, but jumping uh-huh. over this obviously is, is a little harder than a regular uh, uh-huh. jump. And don't forget your blast. blast. Right. So I get to add a d4, right? Yep. Add a d4. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, f- so that is a 17 on the dice. Okay. And athletics, I get plus eight. So yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Where do you want to land? Do you want to land on the T-Rex? I want to just like jump and then like make myself almost like a missile and just go yeah. hey, boom and just you're, jam you're my horns. You're a minotaur javelin. <laughs> and uh, horns go right into it. Roll an attack with advantage because okay. of how athletic you are. All right. I got... A, uh, I got a 17 plus eight. So that I got a 25. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, my horns slam right into it. So I'll just do my horn damage, which is 1d6 plus five, but it is magical. Yes. Because I have an enchanted horn tip. That's right. Uh, so that's 10 damage. All righty. <sighs> I'm in it now, everybody. I can't uh, use my axe, but I can still kill this thing. And I'm going to qualify you as also grappled, even though you're sort of yourself grappling into the side of this T-Rex. That sounds entirely fair. The way I imagine it is just like, I kind of like went almost halfway into the T-Rex in the process of diving into it, so. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, Sophia. Fine. Yeah. Uh, you are first in gonna... a mouth presently. Oh, Just I'm not so a fan of that. Aware. I'm not a fan of that. Um, so uh, first thing I'm going to do is let my spiritual weapon attack it again from behind because it's behind it. Um, so let me go ahead and get that ready to go. Okay, that's going to be a... Oh, that's going to be... That definitely hits because that's... Um, yeah, hang on. Actions, attack. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a, a 24 five to hit so that hits hit. uh, so i'll go now i'm on my two d8s okay and that's gonna be nine plus five 14 uh force damage to it uh so okay. that's the spiritual weapon and then uh i am going to then throw my cloak of nyx born stars over myself to give myself uh so it has disadvantage trying to attack me so that's gonna be my action right Turn you pinkish. That. Perfect. That's the color I found. Love it. Uh, it is going to be the T Rex's turn. The Tyrannosaurus hmm, is going to continue to try to bite you, although you are now made of star stuff, so it's going to be slightly more difficult. The tail whipping behind it is going to go after. Uh, Gonna go after Tuturu again. Uh, so bite attack at disadvantage. Ooh, fifteen for me. Uh, no, does no, not hit. No, no, for Sophia. Oh. fifteen on Sophia. Uh, that, that's with, that's with that's with disadvantage. That was with. Yep, I rolled a five plus ten. Okay. Uh, yeah, that hits me. Okay. This is gonna be. Oh shoot. Oh, shoot. Uh, 32 piercing damage. Oh, right, no! I'm down. That's all right. All right. I'll get you back up. Uh, and the tail at Tuturu maybe. is a natural 20. Oh, maybe ah. not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Ooh, I rolled low. Uh... 21 bludgeoning damage total. We're good. We're good. Okay. PPK. Topia. Well, one of us is good. <laughs> As the T Rex is ragdolling Sophia in its mouth, and Tutor, you take another thwop, wallop to the side, and it is now your turn. It sure is. And Tuturu is going. Oh, uh, concentration drops on the spiritual weapon. That is not a concentration spell. Oh, it's not. Nope. Oh, I lied. Mm-hmm. In that case, never mind. 
Spirit um, one. Spirit guardians are concentration. Spiritual weapon is not concentration. I can't Got control it. it while I'm unconscious, but it's it's just kind of floating there. Got it. Do I need to roll concentration for my um, bless? For your spell? bless, yes. How does that work? It's a d10. Uh, so the the DC is going to be how uh, however much damage you took halved. So I twenty one. So yeah, the DC. Oh no, I'm sorry. The DC is how much damage you took. So the concentration check is a DC twenty one con save. Okay. Con save. Yes. I got an eighteen. Okay. So I do not concentration save. drops. Cool. Unblessed. Unblessed. Blessed. Okay. Blessed. All right, so now I will, um, if I heal, um, do I have to stabilize before I heal someone who's unconscious? Nope. Great. Heal can just happen. Um, then I will, which one do I not have to be touching for? Healing word. Yeah, it's <laughs> like healing word sounds like a great option you just, right you now. You just hear a voice go, healing word! Hey, get up, yep. over there! <laughs> 10 or half the damage. Oh, okay. Oh. So the bless does stay up. All right. Okay. Great. So the DC was Great. 11. And you rolled an 18, so yeah. you, keep, you keep the bless up. All right, so the flowers kind of, or the leaves kind of drop when I get hit, but then I'm like, I look up again and I'm like, no! And then those leaves fly back up, so we're good. Nice. We're good. Um, okay, so I'm going to cast Healing Word at level... Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm going to cast it at level three, because that's how serious we are right now. Mm -hmm. um, nice. Yeah, so I'm going to watch her drop, and then, yep, I'm going to grab my holy symbol, which is my book, and I'm going to chant the words, and um, yeah, let's see. Roll all those dice. What is that? Come on, add them up. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, 3d4, I believe. Yeah, I rolled on d20. Oh, okay. Um, blah, blah, blah. It's going to tell me a number soon. It says 19 on on roll 20. There oh, we go. Okay. 19, and then I have my life domain stuff that will get added to oh, that. Oh, right. So, oh, yeah. because I am a click of the life domain, so, uh, yeah, I all this, like, green energy flows through me up through the ground and kind of wraps around, like, vines over um, Sophia, and uh, yeah, you heal 19, and then on top of that, you're going to heal an additional burr, 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 when you cast a spell, a uh, first level or higher that restores HP, you regain HP equal to two plus the spell's level. So I gain five HP off of that. Okay. Nice. Oh, you get that. Okay. Yeah, I get that, but you're also going to heal something else. Hold on. Heal five. Cool. And then Blessed Healer. Oh, that was that one. And then, sorry. <laughs> Disciple Clerics. When you use a spell first level higher, uh, sorry, HP. The creature regains additional HP equal to two plus the spell's level. So you also gain five. Nice. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> so yes. Oh yeah. Nice. So yeah. Uh, so five. Sophia is only has like a yes. <gasps> moment inside the mouth of the dinosaur. Yes. And you actually do still have an action left. I uh, since do. healing word is a bonus. Yes. So I can I guess ca uh, hit the thing if I want Cast to. Hit with hammer. Hit with hammer, yes. yes. You can hit, hit with hammer. I will hit with chill master hammer thing, mallet. Nice. Master chill mallet. Yeah. Yes. So I'm gonna do that. Um, so I have my war hammer here. Um, bring that down. Oh, I didn't roll to hit. That was damage. Uh, 19 hit. Hits. Great. Uh, so I rolled to do damage already, which was a six. Um, six total? Uh, six total. When you hit with this weapon while attuned to it, it takes an additional seven cold damage. Nice. All right. Nice. So, and then also a creature hit by it, it needs to make a DC 10 constitution saving throw. Saves. Okay. So then it's fine. Uh, da -da -da -da, for the next minute, they're repeating the save. Okay, cool. And then, <laughs> so sorry, <laughs> because I hit it, um, is it with a spell? Hold on. Once each turn, when you hit a creature with a weapon, you can cause the attack to deal an extra 1d8 radiant damage. Yeah. Nice. 
So I'm gonna do that real quick. Perfect. Because you don't hit my friends, so you take an additional two damage. All right. The T Rex. Things looking pretty rough. Tudor okay. getting some combat in. Yeah, yeah. Tudor is not happy. How right. dare you, T Rex? Barracks are secret tanks, y'all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, Lydia, it's now your turn. Okay, um, so I am going to go ahead and just uh, really, really dig in this uh, uh, rapier. So I'm going to hit with the rapier again. And that gets me, what does it get me? Uh, it gets me an 11. You're still blessed. Plus you're blessed. I'm blessed. still blessed. blessed. Uh, and that's rolling a four, right? D4, yep. Yes, yeah, D4. Okay. Come on, come on. Done here. Uh, that gives me an extra two, so now I'm at 13. That is its armor class. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, uh, so uh, second Equal T-Rex. sign, as the gator would say. <laughs> uh, um, I'm going to do, um, as my bonus action, I get to do some two weapon fighting. So I am going to go in now with my uh, rapier. Yep. Get it. Okay. And that, and that rolls 24 damage. 24 yeah. damage. Wow. Describe for me. How you fell this Tyrannosaurus topiary with your trimming of the hedges and your rapier? Um, so um, I see all of my friends who are being like grappled or otherwise hurt. Um, I take my rapier and of course I lift it above my head and just start hacking. Um, it almost looks beautiful. It's almost very Edward Scissorhands, like the hacking <laughs> of this, uh, along with my dagger, just kind of going at it from both ways. And I say like, you don't hurt my friends, but that's not what we do. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna regret that I didn't punch you in the face because I've never punched uh, a, to a dinosaur topiary in the face, but I'll do that next time. And just keeps hacking at it and almost using it like scissors. Um, and then winds up cutting the head of the T-Rex off. Um, and it all dissipates into the wind and floats over us like beautiful, beautiful leaves. Perfect. <laughs> That's you. And Thank we you. smash cut to a quiet interior that almost looks Azorius. Um, you maybe an hour or two later, you've had plenty of time to rest. Um, if you wish to take any uh, short rests or do anything yep. in the meantime. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and burn some uh, hit dice there. <gasps> uh, just to check, for that, was that like the, the the thing? Like it was the, there was some issue with the topiaries getting yes. like messed up? That was, that was the issue. Okay, great. <laughs> the T-Rex. It was one of the topiaries turned into a T-Rex. Uh, so you may, happens. you may consider this a short rest. Yeah, real bummer. I wanted to roll. That's weird. Um, so you are now inside and there's a little bit of scribbling on a notepad as uh, Ifara sits around a conference table with you all. So you're telling me that Theros is dying and in order to make it not die, we need to, we being the gods, need to give you permission to open it back up? Mm -hmm. Is that the gist mm -hmm. of it? Yep, yeah, that's much. basically it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of the thing. So, listen, I admire that you all uh, passed my little challenges. Um, I, I hope you had a good time. I wanted to make sure that you were good neighborly citizens. Um, people that could be trusted to be a part of the community. And I, I think you are. Um, but hearing what your, or what your plan is, I'm not, I'm not on board. And the few chores that you did were to get you this sit down. The getting my approval, that's not, that's not gonna, that's not gonna happen today. You're you're gonna need to to do to prove to me some other way. You're gonna need to figure something else out. Do any Hi, of you even um, have? I, I just want to let you know that I almost died today because of the chores that you gave us. So I know that you might have other tasks for us, 
but like you didn't even really give us a chance to argue on our behalf. So um, please, I'm just going to go ahead and put that out there that like, we're not like we didn't come up with this idea. This wasn't like we sat around like, hey, no, it'd be really fun. What if we asked all the gods to get along? Uh, we went to a temple. We were sent there by a sphinx. We were demanded that we do it. We've talked to Karanos. We've, we've talked to to Krufix. And this is like a thing that's happening. Like, you don't need to take our word for it. You can check out the borders of Nyx and, and you can see the damage. Hmm. Krufix and Karanos, they're nice boys, but they are much more trusting of heroes. Um, That's what I'm saying. You don't have to trust us. You can go look for yourself. Can I ask you what's going to happen to your perfect city if, if it stops existing because the world goes away? Yeah, that's compelling. When's it is the, the last way... time you left your perfect city? I visit other cities. Um, I visit Miletus. I visit Akros. I visit the other great polises. There's a really nice library on the peninsula that I like to go to. It's been a couple weeks since I've left Olanton, but I visit the other cities. I visit all parts of civilization. I think that it is, you know, the city that we're in is Olanton. It is the way of cities to rise and fall. And for from the ashes of those cities, for new civilizations to rise again, it is not uncommon for cities, even perfect ones, to fall into the sea. And so... While I agree that it would be very sad, I think that opening the gates invites trouble. Astarok takes off the final dough circle he has and he goes over and he places it on the desk in front of... Uh, uh, it, uh, I'm suddenly drawing a blank. Name. It is Odafara. Like uh, like Charlie Bucket and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And he just walks back to go over the... I don't like this place as much as I thought I did. Um, You said that thing about opening the gates invites trouble. And I don't... I'm not a city person. I, I tend to, to hang out at the docks. I tend to maybe go to a tavern here or there, and that's fine. But one thing that I know about your followers from people that I've talked to in taverns and uh, what little I know, and, and you know what? There's a similar thing in the ocean where sometimes the rot comes from within. Sometimes something in the ocean gets tainted and then the species around it. If, if something happens to the coral, it can infect the entire coral bed from within. And I know that you beseech your own followers to fight against corruption and destruction from within your own cities. And so when I am telling you that a part of Theros is corrupting itself and going to cause the destruction of Theros, I don't understand how that's not exactly 100% within your purview as a god of order and of, of, of building up. Make a persuasion check. As Sophia said that, I kind of like pat her on the back, and I'm like, "Oh, you killed that! Sure. Great, Great job. job!" And then little little, uh, little, little jitters nudge. of guidance. Uh, no, dance. Her. Okay. Come on. High DC because she does not like this plan. Okay. Um, that is uh, unfortunately it's only an eleven. So <gasps> I, I know only I rolled I rolled a seven plus a three and I have a plus one on persuasion. I'm not charismatic with this character. This is not Velma Sweet. She she crosses her arms and looks at you and sighs and says, I think that there I think we just need to make more of a report. None of you even have identification. How do I even know who you are? Oh, How can I even I swear verify? you're wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Astarok immediately pulls out his letter and is like, I have identification. 
This identifies me as a Wojek of the Boros Legion, and it's signed by an angel. An angel, you say? Well, let me see that. And yeah, Ifara the letter. takes the letter over, reads it, looks at Astaroth, looks back at the letter, and turns just to face Astaroth. <laughs> a man of civilization. Finally, someone I can talk to. Yep. Uh, I'm a city guy through and through, you know? Born in the city, right. raised in the city. Don't ask which city. You haven't heard of it. I've heard of... I am the god of cities. Ah, sure. Maybe you've heard of it. You wouldn't be interested, though. Okay. But, uh... What do look. you think about what your... I mean, your friend here, uh, the captain, makes a very compelling argument. But I am not swayed. Look, here's what I'm saying. I'm a... I've been a beat cop most of my life, you know? And uh, if there's anything I've noticed, it's that if you let, you know, parts of the city start to, like, fall apart, then uh, then the good parts, they, they start, you know, falling apart too. And, and before you know it, the ghoul have taken over everything. And they, they break down all the houses. And then you don't have a city to be a god of anymore. Uh, <laughs> yes. What I think my civil, very civilized partner here is saying is that the the gruel, as in the uh, bad things that are happening right now because right. of the gate closed, um, that's the gruel, and um, right. that yeah. I got the metaphor. Gruel is like a porridge. I understood the... Yeah, I understood. Yeah. That's what it is. Now you, uh, young lady, you, you're you also a city dweller? And points to Lydia. I was a city dweller at one point, but now I, I live on the seas. I live on the moray. Mm. Okay. Well, I mean, I am very close with my sea sisters, but uh, I think that I, 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 I just... I need something more. I need the proof you speak of would be very helpful. Um, I think that I just need I just need something else. You know what I what I would say hmm. when you visit Melitus, the great city on the material plane. We'll have another chat. I will be there. Pray to me at the temple of Ephara in Melitus, and we'll continue this conversation. In the meantime, I have some research to do, because I'm not just going to take the word of four heroes. I admire your gumption. I think that you are brave, and I think that your cause you believe to be noble. However, I have seen people tricked by Phoenix, swayed by Mogis, and corrupted by others from outside of this plane of existence, which is even worse than any of the other gods of the Pantheon. And so mm -hmm. I'll give you another shot, and we'll chat later. But for right now, I'm going to say no to this one. Is that okay with you, Astarok? Well... <sighs> I mean, as long as you give us another shot to make our case. But uh, I'm telling you, you're missing out on a pretty big thing here. You might regret it. I think I Is might. Is there a way we can contact you without praying to you? Sure. You're not my deity, and I, I wouldn't disrespect my god by praying completely, to another god. Completely understand. If you go to a temple of enlightenment, uh, one of the agoras one of the many um, gymnasiums, uh, speaking venues, uh, theaters, someplace where civilization is espoused in one of the grand cities, either Melitus or Setessa or Akros or what have you, I can be reached. So we got to go to Melitus, huh? Well, I assume you're visiting all of the gods. You may have to swing by there. I know a couple of them hang out in the in the great city. Okay. Guess I'm going home. 
Good luck on your journeys, and I'll see you again. And I hope you've enjoyed your time here. I got bit by a T-Rex. So. I am sorry best. about that. To be fair, that was nature's fault. Oh, by the way, uh, just so you know, um, well, that seems like a, a, a nitpick. Uh, don't let anybody go down in the sewer because they will get eaten by an alligator, a crocodile. Just as oh. a heads up on that. Oh, I, I created all that for you to have to do. Oh, that cool. was a challenge. Cool, cool. All right, cool. All right. <laughs> and she uh, sort of looks at you expectantly as if you're supposed to go without her saying anything. Uh, so um, as oh, we I, think, I think as soon as, as, as she said, cool, Zephia was out the door. Like, she was done. She mm -hmm. was like, nope, cool. All right, see ya. So as, as they turn to leave, Astaroth kind of like looks over her shoulder and goes, I was making a statement, but I, I, I've kind of changed my mind. If, and he's just going to grab the dough circle that he put on the table. <laughs> of course. I, I just don't find these around. <laughs> you know. Don't anyway. be strangers. Have a good day, neighbors. She waves as you head out the door. I assume making a beeline straight back for the boat. Get the heck out of Dodge mm -hmm. and on to the next adventure. Yeah, the ropes are already pulled up by the time the party yeah. gets back. Like I said, he is like ready to go. Finally found a god that didn't like your plan. It's not our plan. That's I'm the thing. It's not else. even our plan. <laughs> I know. I know. That's that's the hero's that's the hero's burden, as it were. We gotta make it happen. And with that, I think we will end the episode on that a little bit disappointing note. Um, but you survived met a god, and you're on to the next adventure. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, please uh, tell the folks at home where they can find you. Okay, uh, because we know the order thing now. Hi, my name is Jordan Pigeon. You can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon. Um, also, go check out a lot of the old shows here on Saving Throw, like uh, Wild Cards and Legacy and uh, Deep Water Deep. And uh, in the earlier seasons of the Broken Pack, I'm on those. Hey, I'm Riley Silverman. You can find me on Twitter at Riley J Silverman or on Instagram at Riley Silverman. And uh, you can also check out uh, the Game of Rassilon podcast that I am on where I play the Doctor. It's a Doctor Who actual play role playing podcast. And we actually just put up our very first Patreon exclusive adventure, which I'm actually GMing uh, using the Lasers and Feelings systems. But it's a mod that I created called Jinkies and Zoinks because it is a teenagers investigating a spooky mystery type story. Uh, and so it is three teenagers and an animal companion investigating um unnamed for legal reasons but let's just say it's set in anaheim california in the summer of 2020 and it's a couple of kids a group of kids investigating an abandoned theme park hmm. nice mm. <laughs> uh, i'm danielle radford you can just find me on twitter at danielle radford on instagram at danielle underscore radford i usually keep all the stuff that i'm doing i i, I spout it out there I, hey watch an honest trailer we uh we make them and i like them I'm Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Twitter at Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Instagram as RAR. It's Ashlyn. And if you want to check out my voiceover demos, because I do voiceover stuff, you can go to my website, which is ashlynrose.com. Hi, everybody. I'm the Internet's Ruben Bressler. You can follow me everywhere at M-O-X-R-E-U-B-Y. Uh, please do join us here next week when we have Gil Ramirez uh, from yes. Let's Get Wild Mount, the DM of Let's Get Wild Mount on the show. Uh, and that is going to be a ton of fun. Also, come back here to twitch.tv slash saving throw show tomorrow at 2 p.m. Pacific. That's tomorrow at 2 p.m. Pacific for a brief announcement from benevolent overlord Dom Zook regarding our new channel initiatives. Lots of fun announcements uh, coming tomorrow. So please do join us at 2 tomorrow. Uh, and with that, uh, I think I'm about to turn back into a pumpkin. So thank you all so much for joining us here on The Broken Pact. Good night, everybody. Good night. Opposite howdy. <laughs> <laughs>